Ghana, an emerging lower middle income country. In the last 30 years, several cities and towns have sprung up as urbanization has taken a foothold. There are now more people living in the urban areas than in the rural areas. The country has seen its urban population grow three and a half times over and recorded a 5.7% growth in annual gross domestic product, resulting in a 20 percentage point decrease in poverty in the capital city of Accra. The fact is that uh, the 2010 population and housing census uh, makes it very clear, the figures are incontrovertible, that for, we have crossed the barrier from a predominantly rural to a predominantly urban uh, country in the sense that for the first time, more than 50% of the population settled in urban areas. We have not managed it very well. Um, from the colonial era, we haven't had a firm grip on, on urban development, on urban planning. And since independence, we have not really come to grips with it. And, and we have allowed urbanization to, to proceed in an uncoordinated, uh, uncontrolled, and fragmented manner. Which is not the case in many developed countries. Because we go outside the country, all, we, are, we are having all the symptoms of an urbanization. Many people, many cars, but the advantages of order, orderly development, finance flowing, employment generation and all that is what we are lacking. So we have taken the semblance of urbanization, but not, we are not enjoying the benefits of urbanization. People troop into the cities and they don't have places to live or they are not able to afford the high cost of rent, find any space to live in and eventually develop into slums. If cities look and people come to settle at a place that they should not be and they will stay there for quite a number of years, 20, they are okay, then you come one day to take them off. That is the challenge. Although urbanization has been accompanied by various positive developments for the country, it has also brought in its wake several important challenges. These can be summed up in the areas of planning, connecting, and financing. <laughs> the traditional landowners, they prepare, they prepare their own schemes outside uh, the purview of, of the planning authority, town and country planning. By the time town and country planning also gets to the point of also preparing the scheme, the two schemes don't match and there's all kinds of conflicts. There's no greater evidence of this conflict than in access to land. Everybody is here and you would need to stay somewhere, build your land, uh, find a purpose of land and, and, and develop it. And because everybody is here, the land has become expensive because the demand on it has become higher. Another major challenge of urbanization in Ghana is poor transport connectivity. The kind of transport mode that we have, uh, predominantly uh, private, small scale, short trucks as you know them. Clogging the system, we don't have public transport with large capacity buses that you know, can move people. And so uh, there's congestion and delay and, and people moving from work to home and from home to work takes a long time. The whole transport system is unable to carry the urban, urban system in a, in a proper and efficient manner for the city to be efficient. You know the way Accra was created, structured from the beginning, all the major business, administrative and financial services were concentrated in the central business district. You know, so you have the courts you know, on the high street, you have the banks in the high street, you have the ministries in that area, you have the markets in that area, etc. The core infrastructure is in central Accra and the new municipalities that have been created do not have those infrastructures so it is taking a lot of time to build up new infrastructure for those places and therefore is pressure. Many of these grant plans will be difficult to achieve without the necessary funding. Insufficient financing has been identified as one of the major challenges facing urbanization in Ghana. The district assembly's common fund is not expected to address all the problems of the digital assemblies. It's not the one single financial solution to decentralization. What we are trying to achieve is fiscal decentralization, where we give functions to the digital assemblies and also follow that with the finances that they need to carry out those functions. 
unfortunately, we are still at a place where we are depending on only that transfer from the centre to the district level and not doing enough to generate enough resources at the local level. A lot of resources that can be mobilised from Accra, but I think that maybe the uh, structures for mobilising them are not very effective. Right now, they are not allowed to borrow. They have, they have, they are, they are allowed to borrow, but the limit is so ridiculous that I don't even want to mention it. It is actually 20 million old cities, which is uh, what 2,000 Ghana cities. That is the maximum amount that any assembly is allowed to borrow. So I think that we should, we should, we should modify the system. We should allow those assemblies that are capable of borrowing on the money market, because they have properties with which they can guarantee those loans. I have always said that the time has come for cities to be given their own you know, destiny to run it. A city of Accra should not be dependent on common fund. A city of Accra should have the necessary legislatures in place for Accra to seek its own investors to be able to, uh, uh, you know, levy our people, create projects and then turn the city around. Underpinning all these challenges is weak institutional coordination. Right now, the coordination is almost all at the center because the regional coordinating councils, that should have been the first point of coordination, are very weak. When you establish them, you have to create joint development planning boards for them. I think that they will be better at coordinating because they will be made up of the assemblies themselves and the assemblies have resources and they'll be able to use those resources to implement the programs that they can they come up with rather than the regional coordinating council that is not able able to do that. Each ministry is doing its own thing usually without reference to the other. You know, the road and highways will be constructing road, but this may not be linked would say supply of, uh, of other uh, services like water, electricity. So urban roads will do its own thing. And then you see electricity going to open up the road to put in the service lines. This is part of the uh, lack of coordination. But all is not lost yet. So for example, in Accra, we talk about the BRT, which is urban transportation, which is online, soon to be rolled out. We have ordered buses that is coming. You look at our road network in Accra, for example, massive expansion going on, Kwame Nkrumah interchange. Then we have 100 kilometers of roads in Accra that is going to see resurfacing and expansion. Now that we have uh, a framework and which the country now uh, seems serious to really move forward with it and with the support of our development partners, I think we can do some remedial actions and, and try and correct some of the uh, difficulties with it. So all these measures should be put together well, concurrently so that the, the, the semblance of urbanization as you find outside the country, large population, uh, employment generation, uh, many cars and all that, that you find here, we would also have the benefits of that, orderly development, good services and um, good employment and a good turnaround of money when you invest. This is what our organization is lacking. And we, if you put all this together, we are sure to get there and perform better.